A submarine, or simply sub, is a watercraft capable of independent operation underwater. It differs from a submersible, which has more limited underwater capability. The term most commonly refers to a large, crude vessel. It is also sometimes used historically or colloquially to refer to remotely operated vehicles and robots, as well as medium-sized or smaller vessels, such as the midget submarine and the wet sub. The noun submarine evolved as a shortened form of submarine boat, by naval tradition, submarines are usually referred to as boats rather than as ships, regardless of their size, boat is usually reserved for seagoing vessels of relatively small size. Although experimental submarines had been built before, submarine design took off during the 19th century, and they were adopted by several navies. Submarines were first widely used during World War I, 1914-1918, and now figure in many navies large and small. Military uses include attacking enemy surface ships, merchant and military, attacking other submarines, aircraft carrier protection, blockade running, ballistic missile submarines as part of a nuclear strike force, reconnaissance, conventional land attack, for example using a cruise missile, and covered insertion of special forces. Civilian uses for submarines include marine science, salvage, exploration and facility inspection and maintenance. Submarines can also be modified to perform more specialized functions such as search and rescue missions or undersea cable repair. Submarines are also used in tourism, and for undersea archaeology. Most large submarines consist of a cylindrical body with hemispherical, or conical, ends and a vertical structure, usually located amidships, which houses communications and sensing devices as well as periscopes. In modern submarines, this structure is the sail in American usage, and fin in European usage. A conning tower was a feature of earlier designs, a separate pressure hull above the main body of the boat that allowed the use of shorter periscopes. There is a propeller, or pump jet, at the rear, and various hydrodynamic control fins. Smaller, deep diving and specialty submarines may deviate significantly from this traditional layout. Submarines use diving planes and also change the amount of water and air in ballast tanks to change buoyancy for submerging and surfacing. Submarines have one of the widest ranges of types and capabilities of any vessel. They range from small autonomous examples and one or two person vessels that operate for a few hours, to vessels that can remain submerged for six months such as the Russian Typhoon class, the biggest submarines ever built. Submarines can work at greater depths than are survivable or practical for human divers. Modern deep diving submarines derive from the bathyscaphe, which in turn evolved from the diving bell. History Early submersibles Dribble, an early submersible craft, propelled by oars. According to a report in Opusculum Tisneri published in 1562, Two Greeks submerged and surfaced in the river Tagus near the city of Toledo several times in the presence of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, without getting wet and with the flame they carried in their hands still alight. In 1578, the English mathematician William Bourne recorded in his book Inventions or Devises one of the first plans for an underwater navigation vehicle. A few years later the Scottish mathematician and theologian John Napier wrote in his Secret Inventions, 1596, the following, these inventions besides devices of sailing underwater with divers, other devices and stratagems for harming of the enemies by the grace of God and worka of expert craftsmen I hope to perform. It's unclear whether he ever carried out his idea. The first submersible of whose construction there exists reliable information was designed and built in 1620 by Cornelis Drebbel a Dutchman in the service of James I of England. It was propelled by means of oars. 18th century By the mid-18th century, over a dozen patents for submarine-slash-submersible boats had been granted in England. In 1747, Nathaniel Simons patented and built the first known working example of the use of a ballast tank for submersion. His design used leather bags that could fill with water to submerge the craft. A mechanism was used to twist the water out of the bags and cause the boat to resurface. In 1749, 
the Gentleman's Magazine reported that a similar design had initially been proposed by Giovanni Borelli in 1680. By this point of development, further improvement in design necessarily stagnated for over a century, until new industrial technologies for propulsion and stability could be applied. The first military submarine was the Turtle, 1775, a hand-powered acorn-shaped device designed by the American David Bushnell to accommodate a single person. It was the first verified submarine capable of independent underwater operation and movement, and the first to use screws for propulsion. 19th Century In 1800, France built a human-powered submarine designed by American Robert Fulton, the Nautilus. The French eventually gave up on the experiment in 1804, as did the British when they later considered Fulton's submarine design. In 1864, late in the American Civil War, the Confederate Navy's H. L. Hunley became the first military submarine to sink an enemy vessel, the Union Sloop of War USS Housatonic. In the aftermath of its successful attack against the ship, the Hunley also sank, possibly because it was too close to its own exploding torpedo. In 1866, the submarine Explorer was the first submarine to successfully dive, cruise underwater, and resurface under the control of the crew. The design by German-American Julius H. Kroll, in German, Kroll, incorporated elements that are still used in modern submarines. Mechanical Power The first submarine not relying on human power for propulsion was the French Plongeur, Diver, launched in 1863, which used compressed air at 180 psi, 1,241 kPa. The first air-independent and combustion-powered submarine was Ictinio II, designed by the Spanish intellectual, artist and engineer Narcis Montreal, launched in Barcelona in 1864. The submarine became a potentially viable weapon with the development of the Whitehead torpedo, designed in 1866 by British engineer Robert Whitehead, the first practical self-propelled or locomotive torpedo. The spar torpedo that had been developed earlier by the Confederate Navy was considered to be impracticable, as it was believed to have sunk both its intended target, and probably H. L. Hunley, the submarine that deployed it. Discussions between the English clergyman and inventor George Garrett and the Swedish industrialist Torsten Nordenfeldt led to the first practical steam-powered submarines, armed with torpedoes and ready for military use. The first was Nordenfeldt I, a 56-ton, 19.5 meter, 64 feet, vessel similar to Garrett's ill-fated Ray Sergum, 1879, with a range of 240 kilometers, 130 nmi, 150 miles, armed with a single torpedo, in 1885. A reliable means of propulsion for the submerged vessel was only made possible in the 1880s with the advent of the necessary electric battery technology. The first electrically powered boats were built by Isaac Peral y Caballero in Spain, Dupuy de Lomé and Gustave Z in France, and James Franklin Waddington in England. Peral's design featured torpedoes and other systems that later became standard in submarines. 20th Century Submarines were not put into service for any widespread or routine use by navies until the early 1900s. This era marked a pivotal time in submarine development and several important technologies appeared. A number of nations built and used submarines. Diesel-electric propulsion became the dominant power system and equipment such as the periscope became standardized. Countries conducted many experiments on effective tactics and weapons for submarines, which led to their large impact in World War I. The Irish inventor John Philip Holland built a model submarine in 1876 and a full-scale version in 1878, which were followed by a number of unsuccessful ones. In 1896 he designed the Holland Type 6 submarine, which used internal combustion engine power on the surface and electric battery power underwater. Launched on May 17, 1897 at Navy Lt. Lewis Nixon's Crescent Shipyard in Elizabeth, New Jersey, Holland 6 was purchased by the United States Navy on April 11, 1900, becoming the Navy's first commissioned submarine, 
christened USS Holland. Commissioned in June 1900, the French steam and electric Narvel employed the now typical double hull design, with a pressure hull inside the outer shell. These 200 ton ships had a range of over 100 miles, 161 kilometers, underwater. The French submarine Aigret in 1904 further improved the concept by using a diesel rather than a gasoline engine for surface power. Large numbers of these submarines were built, with 76 completed before 1914. The Royal Navy commissioned five Holland class submarines from Vickers, Barrow and Furness under license from the Holland Torpedo Boat Company from 1901 to 1903. Construction of the boats took longer than anticipated, with the first only ready for a diving trial at sea on April 6, 1902. Although the design had been purchased entirely from the U.S. company, the actual design used was an untested improvement to the original Holland design using a new 180 horsepower, 130 kilowatts, petrol engine. These types of submarines were first used during the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-05. Due to the blockade at Port Arthur, the Russians sent their submarines to Vladivostok, where by January 1, 1905 there were seven boats, enough to create the world's first operational submarine fleet. The new submarine fleet began patrols on February 14, usually lasting for about 24 hours each. The first confrontation with Japanese warships occurred on April 29, 1905 when the Russian submarine SOM was fired upon by Japanese torpedo boats, but then withdrew. World War I Military submarines first made a significant impact in World War I forces such as the U-boats of Germany saw action in the First Battle of the Atlantic, and were responsible for sinking RMS Lusitania which was sunk as a result of unrestricted submarine warfare and is often cited among the reasons for the entry of the United States into the war. At the outbreak of war Germany had only 20 submarines immediately available for combat, although these included vessels of the diesel-engined U-19 class with the range, 5,000 miles, and speed, 8 knots, 15 km per hour, 9.2 miles per hour, to operate effectively around the entire British coast. By contrast the Royal Navy had a total of 74 submarines, though of mixed effectiveness. In August 1914, a flotilla of 10 U-boats sailed from their base in Heligoland to attack Royal Navy warships in the North Sea in the first submarine war patrol in history. The U-boats' ability to function as practical war machines relied on new tactics, their numbers, and submarine technologies such as combination diesel-electric power system developed in the preceding years. More submersibles than true submarines, U-boats operated primarily on the surface using regular engines, submerging occasionally to attack under battery power. They were roughly triangular in cross-section, with a distinct keel to control rolling while surfaced, and a distinct bow. During World War I more than 5,000 Allied ships were sunk by U-boats. World War II During World War II, Germany used submarines to devastating effect in the Battle of the Atlantic, where it attempted to cut Britain's supply routes by sinking more merchant ships than Britain could replace. Shipping was vital to supply Britain's population with food, industry with raw material, and armed forces with fuel and armaments. While U-boats destroyed a significant number of ships, the strategy ultimately failed. Although the U-boats had been updated in the interwar years, the major innovation was improved communications, encrypted using the famous Enigma cipher machine. This allowed for mass attack naval tactics, Rudel tactic, commonly known as Wolf Pack, but was also ultimately the U-boat's downfall. By the end of the war, almost 3,000 Allied ships, 175 warships, 2,825 merchantmen, had been sunk by U-boats. Although successful early in the war, Ultimately the U-boat fleet suffered a casualty rate of 73%, almost all fatalities. The Imperial Japanese Navy operated the most varied fleet of submarines of any navy, including Caden crewed torpedoes, midget submarines, Type AKO Hayataki and Carrier classes, medium-range submarines, purpose-built supply submarines and long-range fleet submarines. They also had submarines with the highest submerged speeds during World War II. I-201-class submarines, 
and submarines that could carry multiple aircraft, I-400 class submarines. They were also equipped with one of the most advanced torpedoes of the conflict, the oxygen-propelled Type 95. Nevertheless, despite their technical prowess, Japan chose to utilize its submarines for fleet warfare, and consequently were relatively unsuccessful, as warships were fast, maneuverable and well-defended compared to merchant ships. The submarine force was the most effective anti-ship weapon in the American arsenal. Submarines, though only about 2% of the U.S. Navy, destroyed over 30% of the Japanese Navy, including eight aircraft carriers, one battleship, and 11 cruisers. U.S. submarines also destroyed over 60% of the Japanese merchant fleet, crippling Japan's ability to supply its military forces and industrial war effort. Allied submarines in the Pacific War destroyed more Japanese shipping than all other weapons combined. This feat was considerably aided by the Imperial Japanese Navy's failure to provide adequate escort forces for the nation's merchant fleet. During World War II, 314 submarines served in the U.S. Navy, of which nearly 260 were deployed to the Pacific. When the Japanese attacked Hawaii in December 1941, 111 boats were in commission, 203 submarines from the Gato, Balao, and Tench classes were commissioned during the war. During the war, 52 U.S. submarines were lost to all causes, with 48 directly due to hostilities. U.S. submarines sank 1,560 enemy vessels, a total tonnage of 5.3 million tons, 55% of the total sunk. The Royal Navy Submarine Service was used primarily in the classic Axis blockade. Its major operating areas were around Norway, in the Mediterranean, against the Axis supply routes to North Africa, and in the Far East. In that war, British submarines sank 2 million tons of enemy shipping and 57 major warships, the latter including 35 submarines. Among these is the only documented instance of a submarine sinking another submarine while both were submerged. This occurred when HMS Venturer engaged U-864, the Venturer crew manually computed a successful firing solution against a three-dimensionally maneuvering target using techniques which became the basis of modern torpedo computer targeting systems. 74 British submarines were lost, the majority, 42, in the Mediterranean. Cold War Military Models The first launch of a cruise missile, SSMN-8 Regulus, from a submarine occurred in July 1953, from the deck of USS Tunney, a World War II fleet boat modified to carry the missile with a nuclear warhead. Tunney and its sister boat, Barbero, were the United States' first nuclear deterrent patrol submarines. In the 1950s, nuclear power partially replaced diesel-electric propulsion. Equipment was also developed to extract oxygen from seawater. These two innovations gave submarines the ability to remain submerged for weeks or months. Most of the naval submarines built since that time in the U.S., the Soviet Union slash Russian Federation, Britain, and France have been powered by nuclear reactors. In 1959-1960, the first ballistic missile submarines were put into service by both the United States, George Washington class, and the Soviet Union, Gulf class, as part of the Cold War nuclear deterrent strategy. During the Cold War, the U.S. and the Soviet Union maintained large submarine fleets that engaged in cat-and-mouse games. The Soviet Union lost at least four submarines during this period, K-129 was lost in 1968, a part of which the CIA retrieved from the ocean floor with the Howard Hughes-designed ship Glomar Explorer. K-8 in 1970, K-219 in 1986, and Kamsomolets in 1989, which held a depth record among military submarines 1,000 m, 3,300 feet. Many other Soviet subs, such as K-19, the first Soviet nuclear submarine, and the first Soviet sub to reach the North Pole, were badly damaged by fire or radiation leaks. The U.S. lost two nuclear submarines during this time, USS Thresher due to equipment failure during a test dive while at its operational limit, and USS Scorpion due to unknown causes. During India's intervention in the Bangladesh Liberation War, 
the Pakistan Navy's hangar sank the Indian frigate Inns Kukri. This was the first sinking by a submarine since World War II. During the same war, the Ghazi, a Tench-class submarine on loan to Pakistan from the U.S., was sunk by the Indian Navy. It was the first submarine combat loss since World War II. In 1982 during the Falklands War, the Argentine cruiser General Belgrano was sunk by the British submarine HMS Conqueror, the first sinking by a nuclear-powered submarine in war. 21st Century Usage Military Before and during World War II, the primary role of the submarine was anti-surface ship warfare. Submarines would attack either on the surface, using deck guns or submerged, using torpedoes. They were particularly effective in sinking Allied transatlantic shipping in both world wars, and in disrupting Japanese supply routes and naval operations in the Pacific in World War II. Mine-laying submarines were developed in the early part of the 20th century. The facility was used in both world wars. Submarines were also used for inserting and removing covered agents and military forces, for intelligence gathering, and to rescue aircrew during air attacks on islands, where the airmen would be told of safe places to crash land so the submarines could rescue them. Submarines could carry cargo through hostile waters or act as supply vessels for other submarines. Submarines could usually locate and attack other submarines only on the surface, although HMS Venturer managed to sink U-864 with a four-torpedo spread while both were submerged. The British developed a specialized anti-submarine submarine in WWI, the R-Class. After World War II, with the development of the homing torpedo, better sonar systems, and nuclear propulsion, submarines also became able to hunt each other effectively. The development of submarine-launched ballistic missile and submarine-launched cruise missiles gave submarines a substantial and long-ranged ability to attack both land and sea targets with a variety of weapons ranging from cluster bombs to nuclear weapons. The primary defense of a submarine lies in its ability to remain concealed in the depths of the ocean. Early submarines could be detected by the sound they made. Water is an excellent conductor of sound, much better than air and submarines can detect and track comparatively noisy surface ships from long distances. Modern submarines are built with an emphasis on stealth. Advanced propeller designs, extensive sound-reducing insulation, and special machinery help a submarine remain as quiet as ambient ocean noise, making them difficult to detect. It takes specialized technology to find and attack modern submarines. Active sonar uses the reflection of sound emitted from the search equipment to detect submarines. It has been used since World War II by surface ships, submarines, and aircraft, via dropped buoys and helicopter dipping arrays, but it reveals the emitter's position, and is susceptible to countermeasures. A concealed military submarine is a real threat, and because of its stealth, can force an enemy navy to waste resources searching large areas of ocean and protecting ships against attack. This advantage was vividly demonstrated in the 1982 Falklands War when the British nuclear-powered submarine HMS Conqueror sank the Argentine cruiser General Belgrano. After the sinking the Argentine Navy recognized that they had no effective defense against submarine attack, and the Argentine surface fleet withdrew to port for the remainder of the war though an Argentine submarine remained at sea. Civilian Although the majority of the world's submarines are military, there are some civilian submarines, which are used for tourism, exploration, oil and gas platform inspections, and pipeline surveys. Some are also used in illegal activities. The submarine voyage ride opened at Disneyland in 1959, but although it ran underwater it was not a true submarine as it ran on tracks and was open to the atmosphere. The first tourist submarine was Augusta Picar, which went into service in 1964 at EXP 064. By 1997 there were 45 tourist submarines operating around the world. Submarines with a crush depth in the range of 400-500 feet, 121-50 m, are operated in several areas worldwide typically with bottom depths around 100 to 120 feet, 30 to 37 m, with a carrying capacity of 50 to 100 passengers. 
In a typical operation a surface vessel carries passengers to an offshore operating area and loads them into the submarine. The submarine then visits underwater points of interest such as natural or artificial reef structures. To surface safely without danger of collision the location of the submarine is marked with an air release and movement to the surface is coordinated by an observer in a support craft. A recent development is the deployment of so-called narco-submarines by South American drug smugglers to evade law enforcement detection. Although they occasionally deploy true submarines, most are self-propelled semi-submersibles, where a portion of the craft remains above water at all times. In September 2011, Colombian authorities seized a 16-meter-long submersible that could hold a crew of five, costing about $2 million. The vessel belonged to FARC rebels and had the capacity to carry at least seven tons of drugs. Polar Operations 1903 Simon Lake Submarine Protector surfaced through ice off Newport, Rhode Island. 1930 USS 012 operated under ice near Spitsbergen. 1937 Soviet submarine Krasnodvardiets operated under ice in the Denmark Strait. 1941-45 German U-boats operated under ice from the Barents Sea to the Lopt Sea. 1946 USS Achol used upward beamed fathometer in Operation Nanook in the Davis Strait. 1946-47 USS Senate used under ice sonar in Operation High Jump in the Antarctic. 1947 USS Borfish used upward beamed echo sounder under pack ice in the Chukchi Sea. 1948 USS Carp developed techniques for making vertical ascents and descents through polynias in the Chukchi Sea. 1952 USS Redfish used an expanded upward beamed sounder array in the Beaufort Sea. 1957 USS Nautilus reached 87 degrees north near Spitsbergen. August 3, 1958 Nautilus used an inertial navigation system to reach the North Pole. March 17, 1959 USS Skate surfaced through the ice at the North Pole. 1960 USS Sargo transited 900 miles, 1,400 kilometers, under ice over the shallow, 125 to 180 feet or 38 to 55 meters deep, bearing Chukchi Shelf. 1960 USS Sea Dragon transited the Northwest Passage under ice. 1962 Soviet November class submarine K 3 Leninsky Komsomol reached the North Pole. 1970 USS Queenfish carried out an extensive undersea mapping survey of the Siberian continental shelf. 1971 HMS Dreadnought reached the North Pole. USS Gernard conducted three polar exercises. 1976 with U.S. actor Charlton Heston aboard, 1984 joint operations with USS Pintado, and 1990 joint exercises with USS Seahorse. May 6, 1986 USS Ray, USS Archerfish, and USS Hawkbill meet and surface together at the geographic North Pole. First three submarines surfacing at the Pole. May 19, 1987 HMS Superb joined USS Billfish and USS Sea Devil at the North Pole. March 2007 USS Alexandria participated in the joint U.S. Navy-Royal Navy Ice Exercise 2007, ICEX 2007, in the Arctic Ocean with the Trafalgar-class submarine HMS Tireless. March 2009 USS Annapolis took part in ICE Exercise 2009 to test submarine operability and warfighting capability in Arctic conditions. Technology Submersion and trimming All surface ships, as well as surfaced submarines, are in a positively buoyant condition, weighing less than the volume of water they would displace if fully submerged. To submerge hydrostatically, a ship must have negative buoyancy either by increasing its own weight or decreasing its displacement of water. To control their displacement, submarines have ballast tanks, which can hold varying amounts of water and air. For general submersion or surfacing, submarines use the forward and aft tanks, called main ballast tanks, MBT, which are filled with water to submerge or with air to surface. Submerged, MBTs generally remain flooded, which simplifies their design and on many submarines these tanks are a section of inter-hull space. For more precise and quick control of depth, submarines use smaller depth control tanks, 
DCT, also called hard tanks, due to their ability to withstand higher pressure, or trim tanks. The amount of water in depth control tanks can be controlled to change depth or to maintain a constant depth as outside conditions, chiefly water density, change. Depth control tanks may be located either near the submarine's center of gravity, or separated along the submarine body to prevent affecting trim. When submerged, the water pressure on a submarine's hull can reach 4 MPa, 580 psi, for steel submarines and up to 10 MPa, 1,500 psi, for titanium submarines like K278 Komsomolets, while interior pressure remains relatively unchanged. This difference results in hull compression, which decreases displacement. Water density also marginally increases with depth, as the salinity and pressure are higher. This change in density incompletely compensates for hull compression, so buoyancy decreases as depth increases. A submerged submarine is in an unstable equilibrium, having a tendency to either sink or float to the surface. Keeping a constant depth requires continual operation of either the depth control tanks or control surfaces. Submarines in a neutral buoyancy condition are not intrinsically trim stable. To maintain desired trim, submarines use forward and aft trim tanks. Pumps can move water between the tanks, changing weight distribution and pointing the sub up or down. A similar system is sometimes used to maintain stability. The hydrostatic effect of variable ballast tanks is not the only way to control the submarine underwater. Hydrodynamic maneuvering is done by several surfaces, which can be moved to create hydrodynamic forces when a submarine moves at sufficient speed. The stern planes, located near the propeller and normally horizontal, serve the same purpose as the trim tanks, controlling the trim, and are commonly used while other control surfaces may not be present on all submarines. The fair water planes on the sail and slash or bow planes on the main body, both also horizontal, are closer to the center of gravity, and are used to control depth with less effect on the trim. When a submarine performs an emergency surfacing, all depth and trim methods are used simultaneously, together with propelling the boat upwards. Such surfacing is very quick so the sub may even partially jump out of the water, potentially damaging submarine systems. Hull Overview Modern submarines are cigar-shaped. This design, visible in early submarines, is sometimes called a teardrop hull. It reduces the hydrodynamic drag when submerged, but decreases the sea-keeping capabilities and increases drag while surfaced. Since the limitations of the propulsion systems of early submarines forced them to operate surfaced most of the time, their hull designs were a compromise. Because of the slow submerged speeds of those subs, usually well below 10 kt, 18 km per hour, the increased drag for underwater travel was acceptable. Late in World War II, when technology allowed faster and longer submerged operation and increased aircraft surveillance forced submarines to stay submerged, Hull designs became teardrop-shaped again to reduce drag and noise. USS Albacore, AGSS-569, was a unique research submarine that pioneered the American version of the teardrop hull form, sometimes referred to as an Albacore hull, of modern submarines. On modern military submarines the outer hull is covered with a layer of sound-absorbing rubber, or anechoic plating, to reduce detection. The occupied pressure hulls of deep diving submarines such as DSV Alvin are spherical instead of cylindrical. This allows a more even distribution of stress at the great depth. A titanium frame is usually affixed to the pressure hull, providing attachment for ballast and trim systems, scientific instrumentation, battery packs, syntactic flotation foam, and lighting. A raised tower on top of a submarine accommodates the periscope and electronics masts which can include radio, radar, electronic warfare, and other systems including the snorkel mast. In many early classes of submarines, sea history, the control room, or con, was located inside this tower, which was known as the conning tower. Since then, the con has been located within the hull of the submarine, and the tower is now called the sail. The con is distinct from the bridge, a small open platform in the top of the sail 
used for observation during surface operation. Bathtubs are related to conning towers but are used on smaller submarines. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.